Welcome back to another edition of Eat My Shorts right here at the Rant and Chair, smoking me a lucky strike, contemplating the world's problems, one navel, butthole, and empty mind to the bitter end. Um, a quick message, uh, for those of you who are new here, uh, this channel doesn't really have any rhyme or reason to it, other than I'm some dude who sits in his chair, smokes lucky strikes, and rants and raves at the fucking internet. And sometimes I drink too much, I smoke too much, and, uh, I use some off-color language, so if that ain't your jam, I get it. So no hard feelings, man. And, and like, all of you who, you know, comment, hey man, sorry I'm catching up or whatever, like, I don't even watch my own videos, dude, so don't even feel bad about missing me. Life comes first. Now, for the rest of you that stick around, uh, there will be some off-color language in this one because, quite frankly, uh, it's kind of a disturbing subject matter. So as I often do when I can't sleep, I watch a movie. Um, and it was kind of a toss-up last night. It was between Zulu or Hotel Rwanda, and I hadn't seen Hotel Rwanda in a lot of years. You have to be in kind of a special kind of mood to watch the old movies like Zulu. And uh, that'll probably be my morning fuck around today is watch Zulu, but, but I digress. Um, as I've been doing the last few days since my legs haven't been working, uh, I've been watching movies, and I get an idea every once in a while, I share it with the rest of the class. So, back in the 90s in Africa, uh, it was a pretty not nice place. Uh, you can talk more with my uh, news correspondent, Chad of the Erie Coast, uh, the Mad Chad channel, check him out. He actually was in Africa. He, he knows his shit. Like, he saw the stuff firsthand. I don't know if he saw these events, but I know he saw some shit over there. So, uh, if, if you ever stop by there, ask him about, like, his experiences in Africa, man, if he's willing to talk about it. So, back in 94, uh, the country of Rwanda, I think it's Rwanda, I don't know, uh, uh, my geography ain't up to par. I'm a public school kid, so cut me a little slack. But uh, there was some racial and ethnic tension. Um, the lighter-skinned blacks versus the darker-skinned blacks. The uh, darker-skinned blacks had a um, a little bit of an axe to grind uh, due to poor treatment because the lighter-skinned Tutsi were favored by the Belgians. So... Back in 94, they had their own little uh, African boogaloo. You know, they went down to Electric Avenue like Eddie Grant, right? You know, they're doing the chop, chop, chop and the, you know, smash, smash and all that stuff. You know, like a million people died. Most of which died by machete or starvation or beatings or some were shot. But uh, they didn't have enough guns to go around in Africa back in them days. Probably still don't. <clears throat> now, what can we learn from all this? The actions that the dude took at the motel, I think his name was Paul something, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name, he saved 1,300 people from slaughter. <sighs> now, what can you learn about this? Um, for starters, uh, bribing public officials is, is common practice all over the world, including the United States, and you can't correct me on that. That's just, that's if you don't believe me, look at the Pelosi's bank account. <clears throat> but that's a thing, right? And when shit kicks off, right, you're going to want to round up your family and you're either going to want to get the fuck out of Dodge or you're going to want to man your post, right? And my question is to you, what would you do? If you have a an important job and you know you can help a lot of people, but your family is the most important thing to you, do you DD and get the fuck out of there or do you stay and man your post and keep everybody safe if you can? You know, it goes back to the idea of, you know, staying out of it or, you know, stepping up, right? But, I mean, it goes to show you the United Nations, like, they didn't do dick about it until it was far too late. And even then, they had to be publicly shamed in multiple theaters of operation before they finally fucking, hey, you know, all right, fine, we're going to help. So, what can we take away from all this, right? You know, you hear the, the preparedness channels harp on about the beans and rice. This is why bulk foods are cheap to stack, right? And stay away from the August and bucket food. That stuff is zero out of ten shorts. Preferred cannibalism over it. Like, 
I've never tried cannibalism, but I'd be open to try the experience over bucket food, unless I were starving to death, and that was my only option. But what do you do, right? Let's say your neighbors, you know, they're, they're being rounded up by a local militia group for questioning because of their ethnic or political background, right? You step up and like, hey, man, you know, just take a little bit of money. You don't want this guy. He's not worth anything to you. He's very valuable to me. So here's some money. And just don't don't bother with the paperwork, you know, or, or do you not get involved or do you shoot it out with them? Like, what do you do? You know, the reason why Rwanda happened, and this is kind of a sad lesson for the Second Amendment here, is uh, is because people weren't armed. Plain and simple. Like, if your average African goat farmer in his mud hut had a Kalashnikov and uh, several loaded magazines in a milk crate, you know, with some nice steel-cased ammunition and steel core shit, I don't think that they would have got as far as they did. Now, now there would still be bloodshed no matter. It, there's always bloodshed. Much like a period, bloodshed is just, just part of fucking nature, you know. What would you do, man? Somebody dropped a bunch of orphans off with you because their parents had been slaughtered. You take them in, risk your own family's neck and your own neck. You feed them, you water them, give them bath, put them to bed, you know, take care of them, keep them safe. Or do you not get involved? Because, I mean, you know, we hear a lot of people say just don't get involved. And don't get involved is probably the simplest answer and the easiest answer. But at some point, your conscience is going to gnaw at you. Now, let's say that shit kicked off here, right? You know, I don't know. Let's say all the white people were being targeted by the brown people in my community. Because I'm like in a 60-40 mix and I'm in the minority. You know, would I grab my old folk and leave? Maybe, but in all reality, you know, when something like the boog or the purge happens, you know, people are going to react differently based off their skill level and their personality, right? A lot of people have been programmed to do the flight response. I, I on the other hand, I, I have more sadistic goals in mind. <sighs> you know, names to cross off the naughty list, right? Because Hop the Easter Bunny is going to have vodka and cigarettes and hop around in Easter Bunny ears with an AR-15 A2 carbine and uh, pass out Lucky Strikes to the good girls and boys and uh, about 3,000 feet a second of hatred to the uh, the bad ones, you know. Because at the end of the day, like, I think it's important to understand we have to live with ourselves, right? You know, we all say we're going to do shit or we all think we're going to do shit or whatever, but, like, and as far as walking away goes, I'm not somebody who just walks away and lets things happen, right? And that's my big beef with journalists, right, during these conflicts, is they will let people get slaughtered and not step up and say anything or do anything. They'll just record it and then show the rest of the world. And I think that's kind of why it's important to the freedom-minded party animals that we kind of well-stock ourselves with live ammunition and extra magazines and good equipment. And make sure that we have the skills to make the bad things go away, right? But, you know, you know, people talk about all these genocides going on all over the world. I don't hear anybody talk about what happened in Africa, you know. There's, there's well over a million people died that were just non-combatants. That doesn't even include soldiers and rebels fighting with one another. So that's my question of the day for you, man. And also check out John Smith. He, he does a question of the day. Uh, I, I do more of a rant of the day with kind of some what would you do thrown in there. I don't know. You just sometimes you get a little me mixed with the hard liquor, you know. Uh, it's just random shit that comes out of my head. But as far as just letting suffering happen, like you walked up and, I don't know, let's say you saw six dudes fucking, you know, pulling somebody's clothes off, gonna ass fuck them or whatever. It's, you know, most people run away from that shit. I, on the other hand, I don't care if I die. And in fact, I kind of welcome the experience because then I get to go be with the rest of my family. But, you know, that coward shit, you know, the average person has inside of them, unfortunately. It's, I think that's going to be the standard operating procedure in some kind of nasty, you know, 
turn of events with civil unrest. Also, while I'm on the subject, uh, you know, they kept asking for police and for militia to stand and watch their motel and shit. After some event, the police are going to want to watch their own families and get the fuck out of town. They're not going to want to take care of you. So, like, maybe having the equipment to fight back on hand, and if you can't do that, have the equipment to bribe your way into getting protected, right? Making yourself valuable if you can't make yourself useful, you know? I don't know. This is just random thoughts and bullshit as I, uh, burn my fingers with a lucky strike and contemplate a second cup of coffee before I have to start my daily bullshit and regimen of phone hosings and chores. So, as always, thank you all for your love and support. Those of you who stick around, stick around. Those of you that don't, I get it. And, uh, as always, I'll end this like uh, Crime Pays and Botany Doesn't says. If you don't like it, you can eat my shorts and have a wonderful day. Go fuck yourself and bye. <laughs>